Uh, well, I have gone to film school. Can everyone hear me? Mm -hmm. yeah. I have gone to film school at uh, NYU, and at the time, NYU, uh, the grad school was located on 7th Street and 2nd Avenue, which was pretty funky at the time. And um, also, this was, uh, I was there during the late 70s when New York was going through a bankruptcy crisis. So the whole city was a little bit, you know, falling apart and, and crumbling. Um, but that was a great time to be young and artistic in New York because you could afford, a lot of young people could still afford to live in Manhattan. And also the city had great texture because, um, especially downtown, because there were a lot of bands that were flypapering, you know, all over downtown. So it was like an art gallery. Uh, the streets really just had that layered graffiti look. And uh, so, a actually, we, we did do some art direction. The interiors were art directed, but a lot of the streets and the exterior shots, that's just what it looked like. We just selected the right streets. But, there, uh, there, there wasn't yeah. much of an independent feature film movement at the time. Like, the, a lot of the, the low-budget films at that period were, like, Super 8 movies. And, um, you know, this was, this was before... Spike Lee or Jim Jarmusch are doing features, so could you talk about like what it was to, to like decide that you're going to do a feature film? Yeah, well, well, coming out of NYU film school, I liked narrative filmmaking, so I was interested in storytelling. Uh, actually, it was around the same time as Jim Jarmusch, because we were, um, he was at film school the same time I was. Um, and if you look at his films, they also have more of a narrative... Um, uh, tone than, than some of the other stuff that was being made. But um, really, in some ways, I was influenced more by, you know, when I, when I was in film school, I loved the French New Wave cinema of the 60s. So I loved that feeling of shooting out in the streets, telling kind of authentic feeling movies that had interesting characters, and where you use the street life and the energy um, to, uh, to be a big part of the story. So what was it? Uh, what was it like? You know, putting it, putting the production together. You talked about stretching it out over, you know, over a year, or shooting whenever you can scrape a little bit of money together. Yeah, it was done in dribs and drabs, not intentionally, but actually as a result of an accident. We um, started filming in 1980, and we filmed for a week. And uh, the leading lady, Susan Berman, during a rehearsal while we were shooting, fell off a fire escape. Mm -hmm. Um, and broke her leg. And uh, it was disastrous at the time because, uh, you know, it was a pretty serious accident and she was in a cast for about three months, longer actually, and I thought I was never going to be able to finish the film. But um, what was interesting was that, um, so we filmed for a week and I stopped because of the accident. But during that um, hiatus, I was able to look at what was working, what wasn't working, and also to recast the movie, because in the original movie, the first week, Richard Hell wasn't the, um, what wasn't in the film, and the actor that was, was it was a kind of different type, he was more of a, a kind of art gallery owner, he wasn't a rock and roller, and um, so, being able to see what was working and seeing that the grittier stuff was working better than some of the other stuff we had shot, I could then go back and um, rework on the script. And around that time, I brought in a, a collaborator, somebody who was literally had just graduated from Columbia Film School, and it was a writer named Ron Nicewaner who went on to write um, the, uh, actually went, uh, get nominated for an Academy Award for Philadelphia. He's one of the writers of Ray uh, Donovan and lots of, other movie, <clears throat> lots of other movies. And he really helped me kind of hone what was working and what wasn't. And, yeah, and how did, you, how did this storyline come about? Was it really an, uh, starting with this character with, with Ren and, and sort of doing a portrait? It, it was really all about the character, and yeah. in some ways, um, it, it, it was inspired by kinds of young women I had seen downtown. Um, <laughs> it, it's not at all autobiographical, but there were aspects of it. You know, the idea of this girl from the suburbs, from New Jersey, 
for me, New Jersey is a metaphor for Philadelphia, where I came from. Um, a, a girl who comes from someplace else and, and wants to go to the city to try to be a part of whatever that energy was yeah. um, that she felt was lacking, you know, where she came from. But, but it was also inspired by some kinds of actresses that I had really liked. Some of the actresses, like, um, oh, uh, what's it, Anna Karenina? Uh, Anna, oh, Anna Karenina. Yeah, from yeah. the Godard movies, yeah. but also uh, an actress that I liked um, a lot named Julieta Messina, mm -hmm. who was in a Fellini movie called, not, many Fellini yeah. movies, but Nice of Kiberia. And um, I had seen that movie, and there was just something about that kind of, oh, tenacious, but, but uh, you know, this girl who wants so much and keeps getting kind of knocked down, but picks herself back up and... That reminded me a lot of the character in Kiberia. Did you feel that like this was something that I was missing in American film, like a, a you know woman protagonist like that, or, or was that not? I, I wasn't feeling like well, well yeah, <laughs> actually yeah. I, but but really where it was coming from was being a, a, a female filmmaker at a time that there weren't that many of them, and feeling like there were so many stories about. Uh, male protagonist that I that I enjoyed, like Midnight Cowboy, you know, yeah. those kinds of stories. But I'd never seen a kind of female, a scrappy female protagonist. And um, since I was a film director, I felt, it, you know, it, it wasn't something I felt I should do. It was something I had to do because I, I like those characters. Where did you find the lead actress and then what's happened with her? Yeah, uh, she... Um, she was in an off, 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 off Broadway play, and a friend of mine had seen her, and uh, we had auditioned some young actresses, and no one had that right edge, and then uh, my friend said, why don't you come meet this woman, and uh, she had never acted in a movie before. I saw her, and there was just something about her that I loved, um, and hired her. And what was it like uh, getting getting the film out there? This was before the Sundance Film Festival, yeah. before there was a Queen's World Film Festival. Yes. Um, so, you know, what, what was it like? Because you had this, you know, independent film really was independent at that time. It, it really was because, uh, again, it was before the internet, so I didn't even know about film festivals, but I had heard about the Cannes Film Festival. And so I literally... Um, found out the address, I don't know how, maybe it's in a book, I found out the address and I sent a postcard to the admissions uh, committee at the Cannes Film Festival and, and kind of forgot about it. And then I got a call a couple weeks later saying, they were in New York, could I drop the film off in a screening room? I did. And um, I, literally, I, I had just gotten the film out of the, the lab and I, they saw it in and accepted it into the festival. It happened pretty quickly. And I was totally naive about what it all meant. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there was something kind of wonderful about being so naive. And I'm assuming Desperately Seeking Susan came about as a result of the response to the film? Well, what happened was it, 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 it was accepted to Cannes and then it yeah. started to get some attention. It got picked up by a New Line Cinema at the mm -hmm. time. And um, I got an agent, and um, weirdly enough, I knew, I mean, there were so few women making movies, and I, after this, I knew I had to be really kind of smart about the next movie I, I did, especially if it was going to be a, a bigger budget movie or a studio movie, because I had heard of some female independent filmmakers who had done an interesting low budget movie, went on to do their first studio movie, and um, it didn't work out because there were so many people looking over their shoulder mm. or, uh, you know, the, the, the dynamics were so different. So I spent about two years reading a lot of bad scripts about cheerleaders and <laughs> high school students. And, and, I, and, and it just wasn't what I wanted to do. And then finally, uh, literally, my agent um, just submitted the script to me called Desperately Seeking Susan. It, had my name in it, and um, <laughs> but what it also had it, it there, there are parts of the movie uh, that uh, reminded me of this. You know, it was a mix of two different worlds: a suburban world of the mm -hmm. Roseanne Arquette yeah. character and the kind of funky downtown world of the, the Madonna character. So I thought I could kind of relate to both those worlds. So so it felt like the right fit. Uh, I want to take some audience questions.